fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver. The Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail, Silver. Hey! As the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up on top of the hill, they could see the band of Indians halfway down the slope. Hem, Black Eagle's braves. Yes. The shooting is someone down below. Oh, I see them, Tonto. Four men. They're soldiers. The Indians have them pinned down. Ah. We'll give them a hand. Easy, ah. big fellow. The Lone Ranger and Tonto took cover. As soon as they opened fire, the Indians realized they had no protection from the bullets. They leaped to their horses and raced on down the boulder-strewn slope. We follow Indians, Kimasabi? We know where their camp is. Those soldiers may need our help. Looks to me as if some of them are wounded. Ah. Easy, big fellow. Easy, easy, fellow. One, two, three. Come up, scout. When they reached the base of the hill, they saw that two of the men were still lying on the ground. A third bent over them. The fourth, a young lieutenant, was standing erect, waving a greeting. Suddenly, his arm dropped. He's seen my mask. Ah, uh-huh. maybe him shoot. I don't think so. He isn't going for his gun. Hold over, hold over, hold over. Howdy, mister. I see you wear a mask. Forget the mask, lieutenant. I aim to. You may be wanted all over the West, but all I want to do is shake your hand. We were in a tight spot. Yes, we could see that. How are your men? Easy, big fellow. Two of them are hurt pretty bad. Oh, Tondo. Tondo, help fix them. I take it you're no friend of those mangy coyotes that were shooting at us. No, Lieutenant. There's some of the braves that followed Black Eagle when he broke away from his father's tribe. Thundercloud's tribe. Yes. These men are renegades, all of them. There are about a hundred camped out in the hills. When's the army going after them? If you mean the troops at Fort Gurney, my guess is it won't be till we get a new commanding officer. <laughs> And Stoneface thinks they'll confirm him as commandant and give him a promotion. Oh, it was too bad the colonel had to die. Yeah. Well, that happened before I got here. But from what the men say, I know you're right. And it's too bad Captain Dawson didn't have the rank to replace him. Now, there's an officer for you. The men love him. He's a real soldier. <laughs> but Stoneface... Major Pollard Ma- uh, doesn't belong on the frontier. He doesn't even belong in the army. Hey... I never even mentioned his name. How do you know so much about the post? I'm getting scared. There's no need to be. Maybe you know my name, too. You uh, must be Lieutenant Haynes. 
You came here from West Point two months ago. I am scared. You're wearing a mask and I've been talking too much. I'm not an outlaw, Lieutenant. You haven't told me anything I don't know. See, in a way, I'm working for the Army right now. Honest? Yes. If you want Toto and me to show you where Black Eagle is camped, we will. Well, I sure do. But I, I've got to get these men back to the post. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I can go to the post with you, and I don't want you to tell Major Pollard you've talked with me. But if you can persuade him to let you scout the hills alone tonight, Toto and I'll meet you in the woods near the fort. That's a deal. Just one more thing, Lieutenant. Have you any idea where Black Eagle and his braves are getting army rifles? What's that? I see you don't. I couldn't have army rifles. The newest and best, that's all. I think back. How far away were those Indians who wounded your men? Try to judge the range. Why, it must have been... Say, that's right. Mention it to the Major and see what his reaction is. I'll do that. <laughs> your men are getting to their feet. Uh, the Indian sure knows how to treat a wound, Lieutenant. Both Johnson and Wells figure they can ride back now. Ah, that's fine. And, uh, Murphy, when we do get back, we won't say anything about meeting the masked man and the Indian. I get you, sir. One good turn deserves another. Thank you, Sergeant. Ready, Tano? Easy, big foot. Be ready. All right, let's go. Adios. One silver. Hasta luego. On his return to the fort, young Lieutenant Haynes reported to Major Pollard at once. The Major listened in silence, his eyes cold and disapproving. And so, sir, he took care of Johnson and Wells, bandaged their wounds, and then, well, we all returned to the fort. And you made no attempt at all to follow the Indians? No, sir. Two of them were wounded. They rode back to the fort, didn't they? <laughs> oh, they're in the hospital now, sir. The fact remains that you made no attempt to follow the Indians. No, sir. Have you anything to add to this confession of complete failure? Yes, sir. One thing, sir. I believe the Indians were armed with the newest and best army rifles. Will you repeat that, please? Slowly. I believe the Indians were armed with the newest and best army rifles. And what led you to make that remarkable deduction? The range of their arms, sir. Perhaps you have a theory as to how renegade Indians might be able to obtain army rifles. No, sir. No, I thought not. Are you offering this remarkable flight of imagination as an excuse for your failure to capture these Indians? No, sir. <laughs> Lieutenant, more and more I'm becoming aware that you're not fitted for duty on this post. Shall arrange your transfer at once. That'll be all. Yes, sir. As soon as Lieutenant Haynes had left his office, the Major sent for Asa Jones, the post civilian storekeeper. And when he arrived, the guard outside was dismissed, and the door was locked. What's up? Haynes just reported the Indians are using army rifles. Uh, how'd he get on to that? He's guessing. What gave him the idea? Simple. The range. Yeah, but he's got no proof. He can't tie us up with them. I'm getting rid of him. Good. And there's somebody else you should get rid of. You mean Dawson? I do. Well, it's easy enough to send in a bad report on Haynes and have him transferred. That isn't possible with Dawson. There are other ways. Such as? He wants to go after the Indians in the hills. Black Eagle's paid us well to be left alone. And he'll pay more. I can use his gold. Oh, I'm not suggesting a double cross. Give Dawson just one troop. What would that be but a double cross? And warn Black Eagle in advance. Hmm. One troop, 60 men. Black Eagle has 100. He could fix up the neatest little ambush you ever saw. Captain Dawson would never come back. It looked bad for me to lose that many men. You're good at reports. You could make it seem to be all his fault. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think there's no time like the present. Tell him I want to see him. Right now? Yes. Well, good work, Major. Hey. 
Captain Dawson reporting as ordered, sir. Captain, I have a mission for you. I want you to take Troop A and clean those renegade Indians out of the hills. Yes, sir. You leave here at 10 o'clock tonight. Tonight, sir? At 10 o'clock. Lieutenant Haynes will be your second in command. Well, what's the matter? Nothing, sir. You don't seem to be very enthusiastic. I believe it will take at least two troops to do the job well, sir. Considering the nature of the terrain, I believe it should be a daylight operation. I can only spare one troop. And a good Indian fighter can make the darkness work for him. You have my orders. Are there any more questions? No, sir. Troop A will be ready to ride at 10 o'clock. Just at dusk that night, Asa Jones rode into Black Eagle's camp. Oh, oh. The renegade chief walked forward to meet him. Howdy. Ah. Why you come here? Black Eagle not want more rifle. Him not pay more gold. Oh, that isn't the reason why I've come. I've brought you some good news. Uh, the major's going to send a troop of cavalry into the hills to him. Promise him not do that. Sure, sure. But we're warning you in advance, aren't we? And there'll only be 60 men. The major thought it'd be a good chance for you to fix up an ambush. Him want Black Eagle kill soldiers? Yeah, he's getting rid of all the troublemakers of the fort. Just think. All their horses and rifles and ammunition will belong to you. You won't have to pay a cent for them. Yeah. Naturally, you wouldn't let them find you here. You can pick your own spot. That good. Black Eagle no place. Sure you do. When soldier leave for it? In about three hours. Ah. Them find Indian. Maybe ten, twenty. Lead soldier to trap. No soldier leave hill live. That's a ticket. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had seen Asa Jones right out of the fort and had followed him. Now they had left their horses behind and had crawled close enough to the camp to see the faces of Black Eagle and the storekeeper as they talked. One more piece of evidence that their rifles came from Fort Gurney Tonto. Uh-huh. Jones, tell us some of them. Yes, and the gold Jones and the Major have been sending back east must have come from Black Eagle. Him steal gold from Thundercloud. Tonto know that. Him steal gold from him leave tribe. We can tell our friend the whole story when he gets here. And when that? Should be tomorrow morning. Uh, Kimasabi, yes. watch. Black Eagle give order now to other braves. Yes, they're going for their horses. Ah. We better stay here and find out what they're up to. Well, you promise, young fellow. Meet him near Fort? You'll have to wait, Tonto. Black Eagle's going to make a raid. We'll have to find out in which direction he's heading. Then ride right on to one of the settlements. Ah. Tonto, that was silver. That's right. Something's wrong. Come on. Ah. Instantly, the two men were on their feet and running through the woods to the spot where they had left Silver and Scout. In a moment, they could see what was happening. Two Indians mounted on Mustangs were trying to grasp Silver's bridle. But the great white stallion, refusing to run away from the place where his master had left him, was keeping them at a distance, rearing and lashing out at them with his forefeet. You shoot now? That's a kill, Tonto. We'll drive them off. Uh, them right way. Here, Silver. Yes, Tonto, they've gone. They'll have the whole camp after us in a minute. And that's right. Good work, big fella. Easy now. Easy, Tonto. Easy, fella. Come, Silver. Come, The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. At 10 o'clock, Troop A rode out of Fort Gurney with Captain Peter Dawson in command. Lieutenant Haynes, Murphy, and another trooper rode ahead as the point. They stopped at the woods, but there was no sign of the Lone Ranger and Tonto. So when the main column caught up with them, they continued on toward the hills. It was two hours later when the trail had started to climb and the ground had become more and more broken on either side of it that the lieutenant came racing back from the point. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho! Easy now, boy. Watch up. You'll see at the top of this next rise you're coming to a camp at the opening of a canyon. Indians. You sure? You all can see them by their fires. About a dozen. Just wait a second. There. Practically camping in the open. That doesn't seem right. They're Indians, aren't they? They can't be Black Eagle's men. There's no harm in finding out, is there? No, but here comes the sergeant back. Oh! 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 Look, sir. Look where the moon's hitting that hill at our right. Hill? It's more like a cliff. You see what I mean? There's two horses sliding down the slope. They're near the bottom now. I see them. Hey, they're coming straight toward us. Sergeant, isn't one of them white? I think so. Either white or gray. White. Almost like silver in this light. But who are the men riding them? A white and a paint. It must be the masked man and the Indian. Really? You're right, sir. Look at those horses travel. Oh, the whites are beautiful. Yeah, the best I ever saw. Howdy, masked man. This is Captain Dawson. Good evening, Captain. How do you do? I waited for you at the woods. I'm sorry about that, Lieutenant. Todd and I have been watching Black Eagle set a trap. Trap? We didn't know for whom it was meant until we saw your men, Captain. That camp over there is a bait. Are you going to try to capture those Indians? We're going to have a look at them. They'd have ridden into the canyon. Half a mile farther on, it opens out into a basin. Sheer walls almost all the way around it. Black Eagle and the rest of his men are waiting there. Waiting for us? Waiting to massacre us? How could he have known? Asa Jones told him you were coming. Asa Jones? Yes, we followed him here. We didn't know what the message was that he brought, but now it's perfectly clear. The dirty little traitor. You have another traitor at the fort, Sergeant. Jones must have got his information from the man who gave you your orders, Captain. It looks that way. There was no good reason for starting out tonight. Except to get us all killed. Mister, if the only entrance to the basin is through that canyon, couldn't we put a strong guard on it and bottle Black Eagle up? No, there's one more entrance. Other canyon? That way. Maybe you use that to get into basin. You could, Captain. We worked out a plan that might make it possible to capture all of Black Eagle's men. I see that you only have one trip in. The Lone Ranger outlined his plan, and after a number of questions, the captain agreed to it. He left 20 men with the Lone Ranger and Lieutenant Haynes. Then he rode off with Tonto and the rest of the troop toward the second canyon. The Lone Ranger and the lieutenant waited for half an hour. How much longer? Any time now. Good. Men, we ride straight for that camp. The masked man says the Indians will ride into the canyon. We'll follow them in and onto the basin. Watch for my signal then and move fast when you get it. Yes, sir. All right, come on. Hit him! Hold him, The little band of 20 men rode toward the camp. When they were a quarter of a mile away, the Indians heard them and leaped to their horses and disappeared into the canyon. The Lone Ranger and the soldiers followed. Take a look at these rocks around here at the opening. This is where you'll have to make your stand on the way back. Right. On they rode after the Indians, on and on. The canyon widened. They had nearly reached the basin. Now it opened before them, and Black Eagle and all his men charged. But the soldiers had no more than shown themselves, and they wheeled their horses and started back for the canyon. The Lone Ranger kept Silver at the rear of the column, between the soldiers and the Indians. His six guns spoke again and again, preventing the Indians from closing in on the column. Riding over this rough terrain, the Indians' rifles were close to useless, and the masked man gave the leaders no chance to take careful aim. The soldiers reached the east end of the canyon. Quickly, they dismounted and took cover behind the great boulders. Fire at will, men! Don't let one of them get past! (laughs) 
At that moment, Toto, the captain, and the rest of the troop were riding into the basin from the other canyon. There's nobody here. That's right. All the Indian go after masked man and lieutenant. I can hear them. Their canyon. You follow me. Forward, Get men! Them up. Oh. The captain's men swung into the canyon after Tonto. The sounds of the battle grew steadily closer. And finally... You look ahead, Captain. Indians, masked man and lieutenant, stop them at Malta Canyon. You stop here and take cover. Oh! Oh! Don't stop. Don't stop. Hold on. Hold on. Take cover and fire at will. Now the renegades were caught between two fires. There was no escape for them, no dislodging the soldiers from their positions. But the fight continued for five, ten, fifteen minutes. Then... That Black Eagle. Him want surrender. You sure it isn't a trick? No. Indian throw down guns. Cease firing, men! The battle was over. And as the soldiers rounded up the Indians and collected their rifles... Black Eagle was brought before Captain Dawson, where he was standing with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. What you do with Black Eagle? You're all prisoners. We're going to take you to the fort and lock you up. No. Major not let you keep Black Eagle prisoner. Me give plenty gold. You gave him the gold for your rifle? Uh, me give gold for rifle. Me give more gold not send soldier after Black Eagle. There's all the evidence you need, Captain. I don't know what to do with it. How do you arrest your commanding officer? The question is, will you get the chance? I could see Jones up at the top of the canyon while the fighting was going on. Sure it was he. He must have known that with Black Eagle captured, it would be all over for him and the Major. If they're not stopped, they'll be on their way to the border before you get back to the fort. Will you stop them? We'll try, Captain. You'll do it. Let's go, Tonto. He's a big fellow. He's a big fellow. Run, Silver! Get him stop! As soon as Asa Jones realized that Black Eagle would be captured, he spurred his horse back to the fort and reached the stockade just as dawn was breaking. Once inside the stockade, he rode to the Major's quarters and dismounted. Ho! Oh, oh. Ho! Major! Wake up! Who's there? Jones! Let me in! Well? You better get dressed. It isn't light yet. There isn't much time. I'm getting out of here, and you better do the same thing. Can you make some sense? What's happened? Dawson's troop has captured Black Eagle and all of his men. Impossible. Don't argue. I saw the whole thing with my own eyes. I tell you, the game's up, and I'm getting out of here. Are you coming or not? Uh, yes. I need a fresh horse. Get the best two in the stables. Saddle them and bring them here. Right. What the... The masked man. You're both covered. See, I saw him tonight, Major. He was fighting with Dawson. How did you get in here? I came over the wall at the rear of the fort. There's a lot of excitement around the gates. I think you're going to have some visitors. Does he mean that Dawson and the men are back? They couldn't be. Who are you? What do you want? Oh, nothing much. You may continue dressing, Major, but don't make a move for your gun. Who are you? I'm a friend of Lieutenant Haynes' uncle. What? Sergeant! That's Sergeant, Sergeant Thomas. You don't dare shoot masked men. Sergeant, call the guards. I have, sir. They're lined up with attention. The general and his staff are just coming through the gates. I wanted to warn you. He said a general. What general? General Gurney, Major. The man for whom this fort was named. General Gurney? What's he doing here? He's always taken a great interest in the post. Now he's come all the way from Washington to inspect it personally. Your reports on conditions around here have been too optimistic, Major. Never once mentioned Black Eagle. What does Washington know about him? Everything. See, Thundercloud has been demanding that the Army capture his renegade son and return the gold he stole. Washington also knows that you and Jones have been sending large quantities of gold back east. But they can't pull oh, it. wait and see, Major. Let us get out of here, masked man. No, Jones. Too late. General Gurney, sir. What the... Wait, General, don't come in. There's a masked man in there. My good friend, I see that you're on the job. Yes, General. But, General, It's don't... all right. The masked man is a friend of mine. You may go, Sergeant. Yes, sir. This is Major Pollard, I presume. Yes, sir. And? He's a Jones, the post storekeeper, sir. Why are you holding a gun on them? I wanted to make sure they'd be here to receive you. Were they planning on leaving? Yes, General. No, General. Don't believe him. Don't believe anything he says. On the contrary, Major Pollard. I shall believe everything he says. Captain Dawson will be here shortly, sir. He led Troop A into the hills last night. They captured Black Eagle and all of his men. Excellent. He has all the evidence you'll need. Were there any casualties? Very few among the soldiers, sir. No one killed. Better and better. And my sister's? That is, 
Did Lieutenant Haynes take part in the action? Yes, sir. The lieutenant has the makings of a fine soldier. In spite of the major's reports concerning him? Yes, sir. Is Lieutenant Haynes your nephew, sir? He is. Uh, An excellent officer. (laughs) One is always privileged to change one's mind. Uh, General, unless I go over the wall again, I'll need a pass to get out of here. (laughs) Well, since I'm taking command here temporarily, I shall write it myself. Good enough. General, you, you say you're taking command? Does that mean... Am I? It does mean, and you are under arrest. Yes. Here's your pass, sir. Thank you, General. Tonto and I'll be camped in the woods near here if you want us. I undoubtedly will. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, sir. I, uh, I don't understand, General. I'm an officer of the United States Army. We'll remedy that situation very shortly, Major. But I have a right to be heard, and you won't listen. You take the word of a masked man, an outlaw, a renegade, in preference to mine. That's enough, Major. You don't know what you're talking about. Years ago, I helped to bring law and order to the West. I fought well. I'd been a good soldier, and I'm proud of it. Now I wear a general's stars. But before that man who just left here, I'm extremely humble. He asks for no reward. He has no thought for himself. Yet he's done a thousand times more for this country than I ever did. For most men, meeting him would be a great honor. For you, this is always true for criminals and traitors. Meeting him has been a great misfortune. You see, Major Pollard, that who is the Lone Ranger. I don't tell you. This is a product of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.